this into your design. Okay, so what I want to do is add like maybe a disc here, a disc there, and you know start sculpting on that. So how does that work? How do I add more principles or more forms into this so I can sculpt on them? Well, I can quickly do that back in Photoshop. Right here I laid out two dots, okay? And I saved that as a separate texture. I go back to ZBrush and I, I've kept this, okay? And you can see I've had a couple of these. What's really nice about this part and keeping it around is I can use it to make different forms. I'm going to just delete this one and delete this one and focus in on, you know, I have a square with a texture and that texture got imported by me importing it into here and then assigning it using the texture. It already had the UVs. Okay, and what I can do now is mount the texture here and then make it into an alpha right here. Take that alpha and same things apply to this one right here. It's divided up to seven. So what I don't need is any levels. And then what I can do is go in here and mask it by alpha, hide PT, And now I have a new form. And all I do is hit delete hidden and extract that new form. What I would highly suggest is appending the old one back. That way you can always get back to it before you actually extract it. Because it'll kind of ruin center for you a little bit. Okay, so shut that one off. I don't want to deal with that one. But this one, on the other hand, I want to extract. Then I'm going to show you one last trick because I'm running out of time here. Is basically I want to take this and work only on one disc and make a radial on it. So I hold Control and Shift. Okay. That will make that green box. I have this big round circle that I made in Photoshop. And I want to take my transform activate symmetry and turn it on to a Z brace symmetry with a radial count. Okay, now uh, it looks a little weird because I don't have it centered. So I can set its pivot point. And now I can make really cool changes to it. I can go in here, maybe take off all these alphas. And just go town. Um, Go in here and make some intricate stuff like this, something like this. Like that. And remember, you want to keep it the same level of detail as your others. So you might want to go in here and just, you know, just make some really different kind of forms that go around connecting to each other. And if you don't like that, you can flatten it, you can pinch it, you can do just about anything to it. Just be very careful with the pinch brush. It kind of it gets a little out of hand with smaller meshes like this. There we go. And see how I, when I pinch that, it looks now like a fan blade. There we go. So to undo what I just did, like let's say I want to see the lions. I can see the lines here. And on this one, 
what I want to do is now fix its location. So I go back and I clear its pivot point first. And then I can go control shift, click anywhere outside the box and I get the other one that I can play with. So that's how you can make like little jewelry, you know, you can kind of put some more forms out here, follow the outside edge, you can put a clasp in here. Really with just the techniques I showed you, you probably can go from here and create all kinds of goofy stuff. So I hope this kind of workflow helps you out. Uh, I would highly suggest just kind of looking at Photoshop a little bit more inside your workflow. Adobe Illustrator is great because it makes real-time alphas, but I really find that if you just make it 2048 by 2048 and use some hard edge geometry stuff like uh, that brush I showed you with the absolute hard edge or you know circles that are just filled in with black uh, and then you can just take these and you can do just about anything with the mashing of them and duplicating them around. Don't forget your center point, that really helps. And that's it. Alright, hope you enjoyed the lesson. Again, my name is Jason Welsh, and until next lesson.